Here's Carolyn Jarvis. With the number of seniors in Canada expected to reach an all-time high within a generation, so too will the number of people with dementia. It is a frightening, confusing descent into the unknown. Most will end their lives in nursing homes, many treated with powerful antipsychotic medication. These drugs are used to subdue dementia patients who can be agitated and difficult to manage. But numerous studies show antipsychotics can also have dangerous side effects, including death. In Canada, a third of all nursing home residents are prescribed these drugs, but nowhere are they more prevalent than in British Columbia where fully half of all nursing home residents are on antipsychotics. Tonight, 16 by 9 explores why the frail and the vulnerable are increasingly under the influence of chemical restraints. This grainy video might not be much to look at, but it documents the last moments of an 88-year-old man's life. What killed your father? A caregiver was feeding him and he started choking on the food. He was trying to pull himself up and grabbing the waste paper basket and she actually pushed him back. And subsequently, he choked on his own vomit. A bitter ending made all the worse by what happened next. They lied to me. When I was told that dad had died, I was in disbelief. Absolute disbelief. Gail Nelson only knows she was lied to because of a hidden camera she put in her father, Eldon Mooney's room. This is the first time she shared the footage publicly. You can see that he's in trouble. Yes. Oh my goodness. I believe at that moment he's gone. What we're seeing right now is him Already dead. Mm -hmm. They're shaking him, shaking him. Yep, just patting him on the shoulder. When you watched this for the first time, what, what did you think? Initially, I screamed. <laughs> I just couldn't believe how he had died. And ultimately, they told me that, oh, dad died peacefully. They came into the room, he was unconscious, and he just died peacefully. When Gail went looking at nursing homes for her father, she spared no expense, opting for the Sunrise Senior Living Facility in North Vancouver. She assumed at $10,000 a month, her father would have the care he needed as he declined into dementia. But from the start, there were problems. Well, at about the 10-day mark, they said they needed to put him on some medication to make him more controllable. What sort of medication? It was Risperidone. Risperidone is a type of antipsychotic, a class of drugs developed to treat psychiatric illnesses like schizophrenia. But for years, doctors have prescribed antipsychotics to dementia patients who are aggressive and difficult to manage. What happened to your father when they put him on this drug? Dad looked like he had had a stroke. His face was totally shifted down. He was drooling and he was trembling. In fact, antipsychotics can be so dangerous, both Health Canada and the US Food and Drug Administration post warnings that the medication can lead to premature death for elderly people with dementia. Despite those warnings and the studies that back them up, 50% of all nursing home residents in BC are prescribed antipsychotics. What was the justification for that amount of medication? They said it was to make him more controllable. Was he combative? Was he aggressive? He could be difficult, but I didn't see him combative and I didn't see him aggressive. A spokesperson for Sunrise Senior Living told 16 by 9 they don't comment on particular cases, but when a resident's physician prescribes a drug, they follow their orders closely. Frail, elderly people are hard to treat with any type of drug, according to geriatric specialist and author, Dr. John Sloan. It is a dark, two-way street medication in old people. Very, very difficult to do properly. 
According to Dr. Sloan, when it comes to patients with dementia, it's all too easy for doctors to prescribe antipsychotics. The reason that's happening is that we doctors and many nurses, most of us in the healthcare system, are not doing our job properly. We aren't dealing with this problem of agitation and dementia in a systematic, careful way, because it's a real problem. This nurse's aide says antipsychotic drugs are used because there simply aren't enough people to take care of residents with dementia. She agreed to talk to 16 by 9 on the condition we conceal her identity, afraid she might lose her job. You're scared to speak out yes. publicly. Yes, I am. And yet you see a need for this to be public. Definitely. You have too few staff to handle the workload? Too few staff, yes, on every shift. Every shift. What does that mean for the people who live there? There are corners cut. There are medications given to calm them down, keep them quiet, keep them in one spot. In your experience, what have you seen are the effects of these drugs? Sometimes I don't see them working. And then I hear that they've had more and more. And then the next day, they're almost comatose. I have spoken to people and they said, oh, it can't be that bad. You just wait until you get into care and tell me it's not that bad. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm terrified. I don't want to go into care. I don't want my loved ones in care. Under these conditions? You don't want one of your loved ones? No. In a facility? No. Like the ones you're working in now? No. Next on 16 by 9, why are we drugging up seniors on pills they aren't supposed to take? I was livid. She got her chart and she said, that, oh, well, she's on loxapine. Oh, she says, this is, this is too high a dose. generation, the number of Canadians with dementia is expected to double. Today, already half a million seniors are affected, with a new person developing dementia every five minutes. Most live in nursing homes, where up to half of all residents are prescribed antipsychotic medication, a drug meant to subdue them and make them easier to manage. When Doreen Bodner's mother, Hilda Penner, started suffering from dementia, Doreen moved her into the Cheam Village nursing home in Agassiz, British Columbia. Doreen didn't even know her mother was on antipsychotic drugs until she showed up unexpectedly one day. She tried to visit with me a bit, but she was so groggy, she says, I, I can't think. And I went downstairs and I talked with the administrator and asked her why she had drugged my mom. <laughs> What's going through your mind? I was livid. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. She got her chart and she said, that, oh, well, she's on loxapine. Oh, she says, this is, this is too high a dose. I think we should have this cut back to half. Hilda Penner was shuffled between nursing homes and hospitals for another 18 months, each time given a new drug. Then, in the spring of 2010, she suffered a massive seizure. She had fallen and hit her head really hard, and the whole side of her head was bruised and a huge lump on her head. Nine months later, Hilda Penner was dead. It was only after her mother's passing that Doreen uncovered a doctor's report, which said the seizure may be contributed to by her loxapine and other antipsychotic medications. Even so, it advised she stay on the drugs because of her extremely difficult to control behavior. Very active, very agitated. Today, trying to make sense of what happened, Doreen spends her time researching the drugs and poring over her mother's medical records. 
Loxapine again, loxapine, loxapine, loxapine. Look at this, it's everywhere in her chart. Yeah. On the 22nd, loxapine, 22nd, loxapine. Yeah. 27th, loxapine, 24th, loxapine, 31st, loxapine. And piled in rows on her table, study after study pointing to the potential harm of antipsychotics. This medication is not approved for the treatment of dementia-related behavior problems. Antipsychotic drugs, triple risk of death for dementia patients. Yep. Wow. When 16 by 9 asked about the medications Hilda was on, the health authority responsible sent a statement saying, the preferred approach is to look for alternative ways to reduce the distress patients experience. However, medications, including antipsychotics, are sometimes necessary. Hilda's untimely death and its possible connection to these drugs triggered a province-wide review of antipsychotic use in British Columbia. Health Minister Mike de Jong's office quietly released its findings in a report this past December. In British Columbia, is it time for a rethink across the board? Well, I think uh, it's time for us to have a wholesale look at our relationship with seniors in this province. Do you think we overprescribe antipsychotics in British Columbia? Decisions around the prescription of, uh, of narcotics are, are made by clinicians. Are there incidents where, where prescriptions uh, are made uh, where they shouldn't be? I expect there are. Among the report's recommendations, increased education for doctors and nursing home staff and better communication between seniors, their families and the nursing home. But that's not good enough for Doreen Bodner. She sees only one clear answer a ban on the use of antipsychotics for the elderly. If she could speak for herself today, what would she say? Well, I think she'd say that what they did to me was wrong. Next on 16 by 9, why some nursing homes... Is there a better way for us to do this without reaching for the pill bottle? are just saying no to drugs. You want to sing a song with me today? 400 kilometers south of the Canadian border, there is a sea change underway. You are my sunshine. Here in North Branch, Minnesota, the entire staff at the Ecumen Seniors Home has been retrained. The approach to treating residents with dementia redesigned, and the results have been remarkable. It's been a godsend. How different on a scale of 1 to 10? 49. <laughs> Jean Lynch and Gary Babcock each watch their parents, Hazel and Melvin, transform through a pilot project called bye? Awakenings. What they were awoken from was a chemically induced fog after being prescribed antipsychotic drugs. What was your father like when he was on these drugs? He would uh, be in the wheelchair and uh, his head would be dropping off to one side and like this. She would just be sitting there just with her head hanging down and, and you would say hi mom and that and she wouldn't look up or she wouldn't, you know, she didn't care. We thought that, uh, that he didn't probably have much time left to live. I at one point thought, you know, maybe, maybe you're better off not being here instead of living like you are. And when I think of that, I feel so sad because you don't want to think of your mom as dead, but you don't want to think your mom as being as horrible as she was living. As part of the program, Hazel and Melvin's dosage of antipsychotics was gradually reduced until it was eliminated altogether. Stephanie Johnson is the lead nurse for the pilot project in North Branch. The dementia will still be there. We're just looking to reduce the medications and, and, and work with the residents, get them to the highest level of functioning possible and, and quality of life. We'll finish these famous sayings. Hold your horses. horses. To ease the agitation and aggressiveness, residents with dementia are now given more one-on-one -on -one care and take part in three activities a day, three days a week. Take it with a grain of... What do you think they mean by that one? There was also a shift as to how to view residents who are difficult to manage. 
what those behaviors are telling us something. So is it a matter of somebody's hungry or thirsty? Is that a matter, is somebody in pain? Are we missing that on somebody who can't verbalize that to us? It was only a matter of weeks before a switch turned on inside Hazel and Melvin. Virtually immobile on the drugs, soon both were moving. They found out that she could walk, and so now she walks and she just beams. Oh man, she just, oh, she just smiles and she just trucks down this hallway. <laughs> she is just, oh, she's awesome when she's walking. Where are we going? I don't know. Where are you going, Melvin? You can't go in the kitchen. Oh, good. Okay. Melvin. Is that meat good? Yeah, it's meat. It's good. Do you want a little piece of meat? Melvin can now feed himself. It's good. And Hazel is no longer lashing out at staff. You said earlier that you thought your father's days were numbered when he was on those pills. Absolutely. Today, what do you think? <laughs> well, you know, he's 91 years old, going on 92, and I'm sure they are numbered. But it's giving him such a, a wonderful, I think, opportunity to uh, do things at the, at the uh, end of his life instead of uh, being just shut up in a, in a dark closet, so to speak. Yeah, you're going to go to... Early indications after the first year of the project are so promising, Ecumen's vice president says this could be the model for care across the country. You just need to take a step back and say, is there a better way for us to do this without reaching for the pill bottle? And while in Canada, many say we're still reaching for that pill bottle too often, change is happening on a smaller scale. Like at Toronto's Baycrest Seniors Home, where Dr. David Kahn showed us a multi-sensory room used as an alternative to pharmaceuticals. Are you trying to tell me that you've got an 80-year-old who comes into this room and honks the horn and plays with the chimes? Yeah, they, they may really? find it interesting. You can so you can feel the music. You can actually feel it. It's something novel, it's something different. And you know, life in a long-term care home can be a bit dull. And so this would be a soothing experience for somebody who came in here who was otherwise upset. Right, I think, I think the therapists learn how to create the most relaxing, subdued kind of environment for some individuals when they need calming, uh, and for others, a bit more of an activating or stimulating environment. It's the wait for change in the rest of the country that is agonizing for those with loved ones on the inside and those who work in nursing homes day in and day out. The system is sick. Things aren't going to change until people get out there and, and uh, speak up and until people actually listen and realize this is happening. are used to subdue dementia patients who can be agitated and difficult to manage. But numerous studies show antipsychotics can also have dangerous side effects, including death. In Canada, a third of all nursing home residents are prescribed these drugs, but nowhere are they more prevalent than in British Columbia, where fully half of all nursing home residents are on antipsychotics. Tonight, 16 by 9 explores why the frail... ...self up and grabbing the waste paper basket, and she actually pushed him back. And subsequently, he choked on his own vomit. A bitter ending made all the worse by what happened next. They lied to me. When I was told that Dad had died, I was in disbelief. Absolute disbelief. Gail Nelson only knows she was lied to because of a hidden camera she put in her father, Eldon Mooney's room. This is the first time she shared the footage publicly. You can see that he's in trouble. Yes. Oh my goodness. I believe at that moment he's gone. What we're seeing right now is him. And the vulnerable 
are increasingly under the influence of chemical restraints. This grainy video might not be much to look at, but it documents the last moments of an 88-year-old man's life. What killed your father? A caregiver was feeding him, and he started choking on the food. He was trying to pull him. Here's Carolyn Jarvis. With the number of seniors in Canada expected to reach an all-time high within a generation, so too will the number of people with dementia. It is a frightening, confusing descent into the unknown. Most will end their lives in nursing homes, many treated with powerful antipsychotic medication. These drugs.